chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. I'll read. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. And that word tempted is also tested. Saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Interestingly, Jesus always, pretty regularly, he, he didn't allow himself to get boxed in. You know, very frequently when people were trying to box him in, he would flip the question back on them. This is just one of those instances. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And the encouragement that I have tonight for you is that, that after we have our wonderful time in church tonight and, and whenever we're in the house of the Lord, it's certainly important for us to uh, have a good time and we've been having a good time. You cannot have a you cannot not have a good time when Minister Tony Jenkins is leading <laughs> praise. It's both praise and aerobics. Right sometimes. at the same time. Anyway, um, moving on. So my, my, my thought that I would like to suggest to you tonight is after you finish churching, please be a good neighbor. Oh, all right. And you may be wondering, well, what does that have to do with scripture? Well, let's go on and read. But he, uh, and Jesus said in verse 28, thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. But he being willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And I just want to say that our thought of who we should be uh, willing to help should be expansive, meaning we should have an open arm approach as opposed to a restrictive approach. But some of us, some of us church people like to limit and qualify who we have to support and to help. Amen. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest uh, that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now, this is a preacher, by the way, folks. Just had a high time, just came out of uh, Minister Jenkins' uh, praise aerobics class. <laughs> And he sees someone who is in need. He sees a homeless man who looks a little bit scary. He sees, and maybe he even smells this man because he's been out there on the street. And he has the capacity, he has the wherewithal to, to lend a helping hand, but because that would be such an extreme inconvenience, he just crosses over on the side, other side of the street. You see that? Verse 31, it was a priest who did that. And likewise, a Levite, we'll call him a deacon, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. I would suggest to leaders that we need to be careful about how we conduct ourselves in the presence of the congregants because they will follow our lead. Mm. And if we want the people, the congregation to, to do the right thing, then it's very important that we model that. You know, it's time out for do as I say and not as I do. You need to do the right thing. Yes. But a certain Samaritan, and we will say this person was not in the church. He was a, he was a worldly man. How do you want to call it, mother? You know, I there's saints and there's people in the world, right? This man wasn't a saint. He wasn't a deacon. He wasn't a preacher. He wasn't a bishop. He wasn't an elder. But he was a neighbor. Mm. 
a, a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and this is such a very important trait a very important characteristic for us to have as Christians compassion if you read the scriptures many times the things that Jesus did the miracles that he did the feeding of the 5,000 it was predicated by the statement that he had compassion I am amazed at times with the utter lack of compassion that sometimes church folks demonstrate. Mm. I'm not trying to criticize. I'm trying to encourage us to get our thinking straight. Someone, I think it was just Minister Phil once said we had stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, being the church is not so much about what we say. It's not so much about what happens in the temple in Jerusalem. It's about what happens as we travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. The people that we meet. The lending hand, the helping hand that we're willing to extend or not extend. Either way it goes, as we say in the law, it's on the record. The help that you do not extend when you have the opportunity to help, that's on the record. Right. And the help that you do extend. When God presents opportunities, and if you were in Bible study on Thursday, we were talking about that. When God is testing us. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I want to be helpful, but I just got out of church Church service, passed around a little bit late. We got evening service. I want to go to dinner. I just don't have time to stop. I'm going to pray for him. I'll say a prayer for him tonight. When I, I'll, pr I'll pray for that homeless man. Mm. But sometimes in the midst of our holiness and righteousness and godliness, we just need to make ourselves available to someone who's in need. You're right about that. We need to have time to stop and help people along the way. Yes. Because I can assure you that God is strategically positioning people in our past. Yeah. And just geographically, you should know that, that Jerusalem was 15 miles from Jericho. But and, 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 and geographically speaking, it was north of, uh, of Jerusalem, Jericho was. But in terms of altitude and elevation, Jerusalem was 2,500 feet above sea level, and Jericho was 840 feet below sea level. Wow. So it was quite a, a vertical uh, journey. Can you, can we come from our high place? Mm and reach down, way down below sea level and help somebody. Mm. Will we do that? Mm. That's the challenge. Can we go beyond just churching and can we, will we, let me encourage you to be. Mm -hmm. All right.